Don't mind me, I'm just having a quick game of uh, soccer or football, playing Arsenal v Spurs inside of the under E. Guys, this is the brand new under E and it's got so much things going for it. It's adorable, it's cute. It ticks so many boxes. Well, not the long range drive one, but we're not here to talk about the range. We're here to talk about the tech inside and outside of the under E. It's just a fantastic car. But before we do that and explore this together, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and join the community and like it, share it at the end of the video if you've enjoyed it. And don't forget that bell notification because every time we upload a new video like this, you get notified. The inside of the Honda E gives me all kind of retro vibes. I'm talking the wooden material that's used on here, nice finishing, and uh, even the fabric that's used on the seats and the color combination with the seat belt and everything. It just looks really good. But what we're actually here to talk about really though is the tech that's inside of here. There's plenty of screens for days and uh, as well as that, loads of buttons as well. Uh, we've got buttons here to control like the gears, you know, reverse, drive, neutral, park. Uh, you've also got one for the uh, energy recuperation mode. So again, while I'm on that, you can use the paddle shift to control that. So you can change how intense that is as well. And you've got drive mode, so you can go from sports uh, to normal mode. Most of the time it's just sat in normal mode, but you can always drive in sports mode uh, if you just want a bit of more throttle response uh, when you're driving around. You've got brake hold as well, which is always on usually. And then on the steering, we have plenty of buttons as well. So we have one for lane keep uh, technology on here, which we'll talk about more as well. And then on here, we've got one for autonomous parking. So this is capable of actually finding the parking space and pulling in and pulling out of a parking space, which can be useful if you need to do so. <laughs> If we look on here, we have these screens just everywhere. There are actually six screens available here. So both sides, we have the side mirrors, which uses the digital cameras on the side of the car. The digital size mirrors, uh, as well as being there for being a side mirror, they also help with a uh, drag coefficient. So when you drive in, there's better uh, drag on this car, which is great. Uh, the one thing I would say though about the cameras for the side mirrors and the head mirror as well, by the way, that's digital as well, is, the, the actual quality of the feed that's coming through it, it's not the best that I've seen. It almost resembles what I'd get on my laptop at home, for example, when I'm doing Zoom calls, uh, which a lot of us have been doing recently. And uh, when it comes to nighttime as well, the visibility on them is not that good. Uh, but hopefully that's something that Honda can rectify in the next uh, iteration of the Honda E. And uh, here I tend to just flick between the digital and the normal mode because uh, sometimes my eyes takes a bit of time to readjust itself to actually understanding the space between myself and the cars behind me, which uh, I'm glad I've actually put that there so I can choose between those modes. On the stalks as well, we have a couple of extra buttons you should pay attention to as well. So on the right, we have the camera button, uh, which allows you to check your surroundings. So whether it's your parking or your stationary, you just want to be aware of what's going around the car, you can do so. Using the left one, what you notice is on the mirrors, you have three lines. Using that, it allows you to have a better perception of where the cars are in regards to where you are positioned. If we go to the instrument cluster, we have this 8.8 inch screen and to the right of it, most of the time you have your power and charge information and your speedometer. And then to the left of that, we have your information screen and on the steering, I can adjust what's actually displayed on there. So I can press home. At the moment, I always set it to my energy consumption so I can see the range. I can see that I'm doing on average 3.4 uh, kilowatt hour uh, per mile, which is important to me so I can control how efficient I drive and I can see how much range I've got left. When we come here, we see the extra displays that we have, so 12.3 inch display. So this is a dual display system. And the great thing about this is one of my pet peeves uh, are the fact that when I'm using my sat nav in the car and the passenger sits next to me, they try to operate the music in the car. I don't like that, they interrupt my flow because I need to see where I'm going. And in a car like this where there's no heads up display, it means that I need to see my map at all times uh, when I'm driving. So the passenger can control their side, I can control my side, which is kind of interesting. I like what Honda's done there and you can also switch between them. What's great about this is this is running on Android 8. So just like you would on your smartphone, you can see applications running in the background. So on each side, you have your shortcut. So six shortcut buttons at all times for, for the passenger and the driver. But above that, you have your return key and 
applications run in the background. So you can sort of cycle through them and see what's running and select a different thing. So for example, I can select Apple CarPlay for my screen. So you can see that's facing me as I'm selecting what's running in the background. If I do the same for the passenger side, it face uh, that way so they can see what's going on, almost like a 3D effect and they can scroll through, they can sort of cycle through what's there and maybe select clock and clock is not on their side of the display. What you can also do is you can quickly switch them across as well, switch them around if you need to do so, so you don't have to cycle through it. So using this button here, I can switch the application. So now the passengers have Apple CarPlay, which is wireless as well, by the way, and I can see the clock function here. So that could be maps on that side, music on this side, and we can both operate the car at the same time. We have plenty of ports available, uh, but before I go through that, we're gonna go through some of the options available here as well. So you've got personal assistant, so you can speak to the car to control certain functions inside of the car. You've got built-in satellite navigation, but I usually just prefer to use Google Maps because it just makes my life easier. But if you do decide to use this, you can use it on the, in my on the Plus app. So with the app, you can send uh, destinations to the car before you get in the car. You can preheat the car, for example. You've got keyless entry. You can use your phone as a key card to enter the car and share it as well with uh, members of the family or friends. Uh, but what you've also got is your EV menu so you can actually see your energy consumption, you can change your charging limits, you can open the charge uh, lid as well which is in front of the car. On your key fob as well you've got a dedicated button to actually open the charger lid as well so if you want to do that you can do so as well. If we go back here we go to all apps, uh, here we can see all the functions available. So what you've got app installer and what's interesting about that is that this is running Android 8 operating system so you'll be able to install APKs, you can install applications on here, you can even do what you do on Android device where you can go into developer mode. I don't encourage that uh, but that's something that you can actually do on here as well and install different APKs so maybe perhaps it's something that I can explore later on, uh, maybe I can install Call of Duty directly on the system itself although the graphics processor in here and the CPU they're not that strong they're not that powerful to be running that kind of stuff on here uh, if we go down and we go to general settings uh, we've got more options available there so you can go to system settings uh, you can change things like your system volume you can also change the touch panel sensitivity as well again this is not something that you see very often uh, in most cars press that to return uh, we go to display settings so you can change the display quality as well and change the wallpaper uh, which just helps you personalize the car as well so you've got brightness contrast levels the black levels, so you can you know customize it to suit your need and then we go to wallpaper and you've got all different wallpapers available here you can add more as well which i quite like i like that you can do these sort of things in the car these are the things you do on a smartphone or your tablet or your computer at home but now you can actually do that inside of the car as well which is uh, exciting I know I'm easily pleased if we go back out to all apps and we scroll all the way down we can go into uh, vehicle settings this has also got Wi-Fi hotspot built in which I believe when you first buy this the first year you get free data subscription and then after that you have to pay for that which allows you then to connect to the car using your smartphone or if you've got your gaming console in the car you'll be able to connect those to the internet and actually you know browse the web or game online uh, in vehicle settings, I love what they've done here because to the left of the screen, uh, you have exterior and interior settings. So, and then you've got this dot here, which is which are the areas where you can change the settings for. So if I click that, this side changes to deflation warning system, which is when I tap the tires. Uh, you tap this one here by the mirrors. So you can see your driver assist system set up. So here you've got so many different things that you can go through. You've got a uh, preceding vehicle proximity warning distance. So if there's a car in front of you that's a bit close, you're getting too close to the car in front of you, it will flash here to let you know that you're getting too close as well. This has got automatic braking as well. You've got uh, cotton prediction control, vehicle ahead uh, detection beep. All these things are there, there's, there's a lot. You've got lead car departure notification system, road departure mitigation settings, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, traffic sign recognition system, the list just goes on. There's loads of things that you can do when it comes to driver system set up there. There's a lot of uh, customization options available in the car that you can do, which I really like because you can just make this car your own uh, from the get-go. So when you get in the car, you rest assured that everything in there is set up uh, for your own need. There aren't any electric controls uh, for the seats, unfortunately. Maybe it's just a way to save weight and also save on energy consumption. I don't know, but there aren't any electric controls in that area. You know what's missing in here though? to add to that retro look would be a cassette player. Imagine just a cassette player here would make it just extra, just a tad bit more retro in that sense. 
In terms of ports available in the car, we have plenty of ports, more than I've seen in any car uh, of this caliber actually. So we've got two USB ports at the back for the passengers. On the front, we have two USB ports. Both can charge your devices, but one is used for data transfer. So if you have those APK files for applications that you want to install on here, that's the port that we use to do that. We have a full U HDMI port. So this full HDMI port, so you can use to connect any device that supports uh, HDMI. So for example, your gaming console, you can bring it into the car. So when you're charging the car and you wait for it to charge up, you can actually game in the car, which is it's a lot of fun. Um, you've also got a 12 volt power outlet, but as well as that, we have a three pin plug. Obviously we're in the UK and this is a 230 AC volt. Uh, so with this, you plug in virtually any device. So you can plug in your PlayStation 5, you can plug in a Bluetooth speaker. If I want to have a mini street party with my friends uh, or we're, we're, we're having a picnic, we can do that. And there's a button that you have to activate for that to happen. So that's it for the Gadgets Boy Tech Roundup for the Honda E. So it's a fantastic car. It's got lots of tech inside and out, lots of safety features, and I can do much more. The interior gives me all the retro vibes I can get in a car. In fact, it makes me think this is actually better than the Tesla when it comes to entertainment in the car. I mean, I can plug in my gaming console and play whatever game I want while I'm charging. Can you do that in a Tesla? No. But again, if this is your first time on the channel, do subscribe, let us know what you think in the comments as well. Smash the like button, share it, and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified every time we upload a video like this. And what have I forgotten? If you want to know more about the car, there's also a full review of the Under E on the channel as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.